Well, Henry, I'm really excited to be here at your house at Elk Creek to do this session. It's good that you're here, Henry, and we'll have a lot of fun. It'll be nice. It's been a while since we've worked. Yeah, about to, six months or so. Yeah, it'll mm -hmm. be good to update. What I find really helpful is coming back here, you know, about every six months, and we do one of these slight formal sessions, and then I use what I learned from that during the six months either to apply the concepts or do my own kind of smaller version of the kind of thing that we do here in a, in a fuller way. Good. That's good. That's the important thing is to continue the work in whatever way, in every way that you do. Right. And I'm pleased that you do that. Well, it pays off for me in two ways. Not only the uh, skill of going into the altered state, but the information, you know, that comes forth is also important to me, you know, either for myself or if I'm working on a book or a project. Like one of the things that I want to do today is talk a little bit about the, the project I'm working on with the intuitive heart. Would you explain what you've done so far and what you're hoping to get from that? Well, the, the, the main thing is I've come up with, since our last session, out of my walks, uh, the notion of the intuitive heart as an image for the essence of the work that I've been doing. And in our previous session, we had, in the session it came out how to develop these workshops and the networks with people as an expression of the intuitive heart then, of the making the connections with people and they're helping me with the workshop and I'm helping the people in their community by bringing the workshop so they can be exposed to the uh, different uh, processes and, and uh, techniques and then be using those and uh, so I've been proceeding with that. Good. Uh, I'm now, one of the things I want to focus on is I think it would be really important to write something. And uh, to, so to get kind of like a, an image, one of the things I'm after is an image or a theme that I can use to get started in a writing project on the intuitive part. Good. Okay. I've also been working in the uh, realm of video to make some kind of a movie about all of this. And I'd like to today to uh, do a couple of things. One is to get some ideas about the movie and the making of the movie, but also thinking that some of what we might do here today being captured on video could actually go in the info infomercial itself so that some of what we'll be doing here today will actually then go and appear in the infomercial that I'm making. Great. So uh, those are some of my goals. And of course, it always comes out that I give myself some information about, uh, you know, what I need to be working on within myself, however I might be blocking myself, things that I might aspire to, or new levels of creativity or work that uh, uh, would be helpful for me. As you see here, I'm taking notes yeah. because these notes always help me in a session to remember what it is that we specifically want to ask for, right. although sometimes it does go in its very interesting own direction. Sure, sure. Okay. All right, well that's a lot there. Is there anything more you're hoping to work with? Or? Well, I, I, um, one of the things I wanted to mention was in terms of the induction uh, process. Uh, the last couple of times you pretty much let me just sort of go into the state by myself because of what I'm going to be showing people in terms of using imagery like of a beautiful surroundings and imagery of teachers and healers to try to evoke a mood of a higher level of consciousness, maybe uh, if you wouldn't mind to include that in some kind of a, of a small induction process whereas after I'm relaxed you give me the suggestions to uh, think of yourself absorbing, you know, the vibrations of a wonderful place or think, of, think about some wonderful places, however you know that you would uh, want to give that so that I'm drawing upon the power of place. Okay. And then have me uh, in some way, whether think, review, or imagine somebody is here or just review people I've known in terms of the inspirations that I've received from people, the kind of the the consciousness of wisdom, the consciousness of love and compassion and inspiration and draw on those and then we can go with the, uh, the blue flame and I think one of the things too with the intuitive heart is to at some point perhaps in the induction or later on is the imagery of the intuitive heart and using that to see 
one, what kind of imagery would I give for the intuitive part? And two, when I got in touch with that imagery and contemplated it, what would the intuitive part say? You know, or what would I say from that point of view? Right, that's a good point. So it's kind of like, in, in some sense, it's like inventing on the spot, inventing a drill, mm -hmm. which is the image, and then using the drill and seeing what comes up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which is always the process we've worked with anyway, you know, while under the, uh, in, in this state of consciousness, asking for uh, information that might be keys to deeper levels or higher levels, and then using those keys and going to those levels, that seems to be a process that uh, we've worked with quite a bit. And, and seems to have worked very well. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, I guess that's a lot there. Did you have anything uh, more? No, that's that probably seems, enough. That seems like a lot. Okay, so. well, I'll just get back here and relax. All right. It'll be a nice, um, longer induction than we normally have done, and I will bring some of that in very spontaneously okay. right. and, and creatively. Um, even though you'd like me to direct this a little bit more um, than we have these last couple times we've worked, I would still ask you just to take one minute first at the start, just to take about a minute, just to use any favorite method you have of prayer, of centering, of reaffirming your ideals for doing this work and then I'll come in in just about a minute. Remember to breathe deeply and smoothly as we ask for guidance this day in the great work, the great opportunity, and the great adventure of our time, the sacred journey, the inner journey, the journey to the very source of our being to the very source of what we call the self, to that aspect of our higher mind, of our higher guidance, and our higher ability. And let us begin this day, this session, with a very accepted and well-known method of relaxation called progressive relaxation, where we simply relax the different parts of the body progressively. Obviously, you have done this many times, and it is very easy for you to do this exercise. So just beginning at the eyes, relax the eyes. Not to be concerned about any little flickering or fluttering in the eyelids that is called REM, rapid eye movement, and that is a perfectly normal and natural part of this experience. Remember that this is something that you do. Nobody else can do this for you. So take your time, relax the eyelids, and allow the relaxation to go outward to the entire face area. Just think about relaxing the face. Feel the relaxation going outward 
to the entire head area, relaxing the head. Enjoy the relaxation going to the neck, to the shoulders, down the arms, and into the hands. Take a deep breath now and fill the lungs with relaxation and allow that relaxation to go to the solar plexus, to the spine, slowly down the spine. to the hips, the legs, the feet, all the way out to the toes, completely and pleasantly relaxing your entire body. As you just slow down a little bit. Just allow yourself to slow down a little bit. And as we go along, you can slow down a little bit more and a little bit more. Returning once again to your natural level of relaxation, that level of inner peace, inner quiet, that level where you are one with the self, with the Creator, and all that is. Returning now to that safe place deep within, the place of peace, the place of centering. And as you go deep within, we would ask that this time you go to a new center to the center of the intuitive heart. I do not know specifically where the intuitive heart is for you. It may include all of your being. It may even extend beyond the physical body itself. It may even include all of creation. However or wherever you perceive this to be is correct for you. There is no right or wrong. Simply going now to the intuitive heart. And as you do, you are also very aware that the intuitive heart is a wonderful level of vibration, a wonderful place, although not necessarily tangible. The intuitive heart is truly your center. You have realized this from the most ancient of times, and you will realize this throughout time, that the intuitive heart is truly 
the essence of your being. The place of your strength and of your wisdom. And I will be quiet now that this may happen easily, without thought or forethought. Simply allow your inner guidance with trust, with wisdom, to bring you now to the center of the intuitive heart. As you have noticed, as we have worked together previously, that you may ask and receive the guidance and inspiration of others from many levels and many planes of existence. Ask and receive the counsel and guidance the inspirations of those who have helped you before, those who continue to help you now, and those who will help in time future. This is your gift. What they offer is their gift. Gifts of the spirit. Gifts of the heart gifts of guidance, gifts of practical information, gifts of ancient wisdom offered for practical application in the present. And you may notice that the intuitive heart also is connected with the blue light, the light of higher wisdom, of spiritual guidance. Often you have perceived this light, and you may bring it back now. It may begin as a tiny flicker, a flickering flame of blue light, usually in the solar plexus area. With patience and with nurturing, the flame becomes brighter, an inner glow, an inner radiance extending beyond the physical body. Allow the blue flame now to become violet or even indigo, a blue-violet light, the light of the connection with the spiritual realms, the light of protection, the light of balance, the light of harmony. Allow the blue-violet flame to grow brighter, stronger, clearer, and I will be quiet.
and the light guides you and protects you. The light becomes a channel of wisdom, of guidance, of help and benefit, connecting the spiritual realm with your own higher mind, where you are then able to speak, chant, communicate the guidance that comes through you, not necessarily from you, but opening yourself now to the guidance that comes through you. Allow the light to radiate in fullness. Feel its vibration. Your inner being may already be vibrating with the pulse of life of the blue-violet flame, the flame of life itself. And you may wish to begin this connection and strengthen the connection by making a sound. Bring the vibration of the blue flame into a verbal or auditory sound. As you are ready, you may chant or sing or speak or make the sound that wishes to come through, which will assist in strengthening the connection and the bond from the high spiritual realm into the physical body. There is no rush. Simply begin as you are ready.
thank you very much for that attunement. Now enter fully into the place termed the intuitive heart. What is the nature of this place? As you are ready, allow the intuitive heart to speak through you, or simply describe the place of the intuitive heart. Take your time, there is no rush. The intuitive heart is the pulse of life. The pulse of life is a happy beat. You speak, you live, you act, you come on this vibration, this pulse. While the rappers know it, they improvise and they make up their words, their song, their music, their feelings. It's a gushing, it's a rushing, it's a coming, a coming forth. That poetic, that rhythm, that beat. It's a happy time, it's a happy caring, it's a connection, it's feeling the flow, it's going with the flow. It's being with it. It's being connected to the beat, to the pulse, to the rhythm, to the music, to the harmony. We all know it, we all feel it, we're with it. It's of us, it's who we really are. It's not a who, it is just an is. It is us. It is life. It's all of life. It feels good. It cares. It's connected. It values. It's the beautiful colors. Of course, we call it love. God is love. Life is love. Light is love. We say these things. It's the pulse. It's the beat. The electricity. And it's everywhere. It runs through everything. And it knows all, it knows all with a caring, loving sense. It knows things in their essence, knows things in their beauty. What's beautiful about them? The beauty of a thing is its own essence shining. The beauty of a thing is its own rightness of fit, its own appropriateness, its own sense of wisdom, its own genius. The beauty of a thing. The beauty of a thing is not always just its outward manifestation, but it's seen in that context of its function, of its abilities and skills, all there, all evidence. The intuitive heart is an open heart. It's sharing then. It gives of itself. We're being who we are, just ourselves, willing to be that. Willingness just to be who we are. Here I am. See me, enjoy me, I'm enjoying me, I'm enjoying you, I'm enjoying life. Oh, it's an ice cream sundae flowing over with the toppings and the goodies. It's the music pouring out, coda after coda, just coming forth, the applause and the happy dance, the light bubbling, the Christmas tree just filled with lights and sparkles, more all draped around it, snow drifts, more than enough to go around. Abundance. It's that happy happiness. And much more. It's not just the Jupiter, the happy, overabundant, the expansive, but the intuitive part too knows darkness, knows the pain and, and suffering. That is that process, that Saturn, we might say, in which things turn inward in which they go through transformation and change, and it hurts. The hurt of the change, the twisting, turning, as something is moving from one thing into another. As depression is letting go and giving up painfully the attachments of the past, gradually, slowly, painfully honoring all of the loves, all of the attachments, all of the carings and beliefs and investments of the past, 
and feeling them go, feeling them dissolve, feeling them not serve anymore, and the food that used to flow through the channels of those past attachments drying up and honoring that, not taking it lightly, but honoring it, so then feeling the pain, feeling the pain then as the new starts to form and formulate and be ready to be born and to come forth. And the new coming forth, learning, striving, its inner perfection, being of a pure vibration that doesn't quite yet know how to make its pipes work, its legs stand, and see the, the beauty, the, the gawkly, beauty of the doe being born and standing up almost immediately but its legs so long compared to its body and it's standing there the beauty that it's being its willingness to be there and yet it's a while before it has the strength it has the keenness to be able to move along the terrain so at first things come into being and they don't work or fit just yet or be able to survive on their own and the intuitive heart is a also that process of growing of growing the sea legs of growing the skin and the 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 cunning the knowledge the skills to take that spark take that knowing and bring it out into the world so the intuitive heart has been many dimensions to it. An inner knowing, an inner connectedness through inside being able to feel and sense all of life, drawing then inspiration and wisdom, but also being able to experience other people, other beings from within ourselves and feeling that connection in a caring way it might lead us to have greater insight and rapport with another person also lead us to discover new dimensions within ourselves as we find that other person and their awareness within us knowledge attitudes that are potentials within us coming alive in that relationship. And the reason it is said that the heart is that place where heaven and earth come together is because the earth, without the heaven, is but a mechanical meatball type of place and the heavens give value, give purpose, give meaning to that constant dance of energy exchange and energy transformation. But the heaven without the earth, but mere ideas, possibilities, patterns in the great mind. And in order to materialize, having to come in for the spirit to come into the body and live fully, there has to be some type of transformation, some change, some coming of understanding about the limitations of the physical. For that wild spirit to be able to ride the physical in a way that doesn't ride it to dust, and crush, crush it, the very vehicle. And thus the compassion, the caring, the recognizing of our needs for one another. And the heart then becomes like the adapter, the connector, the thing that is able to thus bridge the infinite possibilities of the spirit with a similarly infinite but working on a very different domain of the earth. That's why you have the image of Jesus on the cross with his heart right there at the intersection. And the ancient 
the Americans, the Aztec, and the Mayans, and all had the heart as pictured as the center of the universe where heaven and earth met, right at the top of their pyramid, reaching to the sky, and the sky reaching down to the earth, and then meeting in the heart. God and the human meet in the heart. And that's where each of us can meet, both in our humanly way and uh, in our divine spirit manner, meeting in the heart. And we talk about a heart-to-heart -heart connection. And it's talking about that sense of knowing and understanding one another in both of our physical, temporal existence and our eternal or soul-like existence. It is feeling that oneness of spirit, though individualized in two separate souls. That is the heart-to-heart -heart connection. And we experience it from within us. Intuitive, into ourselves, where we make this discovery of consciousness. This path for the intuitive heart. This person here had been taking, guided, led toward one of the things of his own path, his own story, which is common to us all, is coming into life a perfect being full of joy and happiness, pure spirit in a body that is capable of being a physical channel of that pure spirit while in the cradle, but certainly not capable of taking that and walking with it through uh, the life. And then experiencing as an initiation, the various wounds and frustrations and misunderstandings that is a natural part of human existence. Ah, being initiated into the human condition. This, of course, being a source of great pain, terror. And so, of course, then adapting, creating certain survival mechanisms for being able to take this fear of life, this recognition of one's vulnerability and the terror involved in that, and developing some armor that allows one to then continue, go on, and continue in the school and not drop out. In this particular case, the armoring being the intelligence, the use of the mind, and growing in knowledge, and getting by and excelling through the use of knowledge, and the marketing of knowledge, and then reaching a point in which knowledge alone did not fulfill, did not bring a sense of fullness of life, and the intuitive heart speaking a little bit and saying, you're not happy, you're not full, there's something more. And then going on then to the next level of the lessons in which being guided to both by the thoughts and the intelligence and by the ache in the heart to say there must be more, there must be more. And gradually going through a transition then of wanting to shine and outshine the others as a mode of survival to coming through the experience and the growth of the intuitive heart to letting go of the need to be the best or the first or the most as a means of survival to now having survival needs being taken care of to start being aware of through the mechanism of the intuitive heart of one's essential identity as being a network of other people, of relationships, of the interconnectedness of which we all are. That this being is a channel or a window onto the infinite. 
It's a window that is being created, that is being fed by all of one's relationships and friends. And through it, one's ancient choices and timeless inclinations coming forth for the universal to express its many wondrous ways and beauties through the individual uniquely Henry style in which this comes forth. And everybody discovering their own intuitive heart then finds that through it, they find that way in which they touch with those universal energies, the universal values, truths, and wisdoms. And is able to live it and express it and share it in their own unique way, which is then their gift to the world. There is no manual written on how to be yourself. How to be the you that is uniquely you. This you that is uniquely you, you can only live and discover intuitively. And that is really the heart of intuition, is that process by which we come to be the us that we truly are. Our own unique expression of the one universal being. And that is the essence of the intuitive heart. And thus we become our own song and dance, our own poetry, our own rendition of the one universal anthem, played out, sung out, drawn out, each in a different way, each in a way that delights and amazes the rest of us, as if we are sitting around a campfire. And each of us says, let me tell you my story about fire. And each of us has a different story to tell about fire. It's all the same fire, it's all the same fire we've all grown to love and know and worship and cherish and enjoy. But each person has their own unique story of the fire to tell. And when we hear that story, spoken from you spontaneously, impromptu from your own intuitive heart, we're all amazed. Wow, I never thought of that before. That is really something. Oh, my sense of fire is so enriched by hearing your story. And you, in turn, upon sharing that story, feel brought in, invited, welcomed into the world. And thus you, being essentially divine, God in nature, God is incorporated a little bit more. And a little bit more uh, d defined sort of way through your own being. So each of us has that same mission. Each of us is very important. Now if we look to the rational mind, or if we look to the physical skills, or if we look just to our feelings, none of these things alone can arrive at the living truth of what is being said here. It's the intuitive heart that can integrate these things in a manner that is both of a feeling lived earthly fleshly way and a spirit idealistic kind of way the intuitive heart does that and you can't look around you for any clues as to how to proceed you have to look inside yourself for the answer is within in your own heart even though the more deeply you get to know that intuitive heart, you recognize that we're all drawing upon the same intuitive heart. It is one. Thank you very much.
Just rest, please, for a moment. Just rest for a moment and recenter. Re-experience the intuitive heart. Touch it deeply. Just rest. As you continue to rest, I would ask that you bring in the voice of the intuitive heart itself to bring through your voice the message of the heart itself. Beginning when you are ready, I am the voice of the intuitive heart. I am the messenger of the intuitive heart and bring in this very specific message.
continue to rest. And now, I would ask that you describe the picture or the image of the intuitive heart. Paint us this picture. Draw for us in words the vision, the logo, the emblem of the intuitive heart. Just begin as you are ready. The essential image of the intuitive heart is we make that heart shape. The coming together of my right and left hands. The heart is this very special organ of being. It has the two parts coming together. And this seems to be the essence of the heart, the coming together of the two as if creation in order to emerge from that stillness had to somehow separate itself into two aspects and then there being a tension, a vibration, a pulsing, a polarity between those. They could not go their separate ways but they must be married together in a harmonious, beating, pulsing, vibrating way. So the essence of the heart, then, is this sense of vibration, of vitality, of energy that's created by the two being one in some dynamic relationship. And so we have that in the very beginning of the heart. And then, from that, that there is on the one hand a feeling of outreach and a feeling of inwardness. Outreach and inwardness. And these again being two aspects, two things that work in complementary fashion. First of all, there is the going within. The going within, and as we go in, we meet the world. We go within, and first we meet ourselves. And the intuitive heart would have us know and accept and reflect ourselves. I can be here for me. I hear me. I am aware of me. I can reflect it back to myself and give me explicit consciousness of me. I can go in farther and go beyond me to areas of knowledge, of wisdom that lie beyond anything that I have taken in through my own experience. So I go in to the heart inward and I draw upon inspiration, not just mere facts, such as what's the serial number on the uh, life insurance policy that's residing at this location and address, but rather, what is the essence, what is the importance of this information, what is it that you could use or need to know that would be helpful to you in, in helping the things that you care about in the things that matter. So it is not just raw intuition, raw psychic power, but is that psychic power.
power in the service of values, in the service of caring. And then we go a little deeper into the intuitive part. And I can find you. And I can find you inside of me. So I can go in and I can make a connection with you. And I can sense what it's like to be you. And I can connect with what it's like to be you with things that I've experienced. And I get more insight on my own life. And as I share with you what I'm experiencing, you have more insight on yours. And I'm meeting you from within myself. So I go within, and yet the deeper I go, the more outward I find myself. And we can take it from the other direction. The winged heart, the flying heart that can go off. It can go out. It can embrace others and make that connection. It can go to the heavens, to the highest or farthest point, far as the imagination can. As I reach out to you and make a connection with you and know you and enjoy you and love you, I start discovering that it is taking me inside. And I'm finding something more about me. I'm learning more about me, discovering new aspects of me as I embrace you. And as I spread the wings, as it were, of my intuitive heart, and perhaps on a song, fly in my imagination on its magic carpet up to the heavens to draw inspiration. I find those new ideas, inspirations, not only out, outwardly in my life, in surprising moments of discovery, but I find them within myself, as if my heart was whispering to me. As if I knew it all along, it was always there. So the great outreach and the inwardness come together. So knowing and caring. Being and acting, being guided in one's actions. Inward and outward, myself, others. All of these coming together in the intuitive heart. And the intuitive heart as well, this sense of caring art. Art which we have a tendency to put on a pedestal and say that other people are artists but not us. The intuitive heart recognizes that art belongs to everyone. Everyone is capable of enjoying themselves, expressing themselves, and caring about the finer points of their life by decorating their home, by singing and playing, by dancing when they're in a good mood, by painting their moods, or dressing in a particular way to express how they're feeling that day. Everybody has the capability of enjoying using the various arts to express what is in their hearts and to have those arts that carry that expression, carry that heart. So we find in the intuitive heart as a logo, as an emblem. The heart itself as a coming together of two. The reaching out, whether it's hands or wings, and the seeing into some kind of an energy, an eye there, the very center of things that's very knowing. Something that both goes in and out at the same time. Thank you very much.
very much. And once again, just rest, center the body, calm the mind, soothe the spirit. Just rest.